Looking for magic cards? Channel Fireball offers a wide selection of magic singles and sealed product. You can now use the promo code LVD at checkout. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at another historic deck and I've got a very fun green-white token deck in store for you today named Mirari's March. It's a Wilderness Reclamation token variant. So as you'll notice we have a lot of token makers we can play at instant speed and that way we get to leverage the mana advantage created by Wilderness Reclamation and we even have up to 8 lands in the deck that can generate tokens that we then get to untap with Reclamation to make even more tokens. So we've got a ton of synergy with it and especially if we can combine Reclamation with Mirari's Wake which doubles the mana produced by our lands as well as giving our creatures plus one plus one we can make a ton of mana to sink into a potentially very large March of the Multitudes to make a whole bunch of life-linking soldier tokens so that's the end game getting a Reclamation Wake in play and then casting a huge March of the Multitudes where all the tokens will also get plus one plus one so that's our deck's end game which usually goes over the top of most other strategies then taking a look at the rest of the deck, we're also playing Riz the Redeemed, which also has great synergy with the Wilderness Reclamation, since we can end of turn float a bunch of mana, and then activate Riz's second ability for 6 mana, tapping him, and then for each token we control, we get to make another creature token that's a copy of that creature, so we get to go very wide very quickly. And then we also have the full playset of Legion's Landing, which if we attack with three or more creatures with the landing in play, it transforms into Adanto, the first fort, which then for two and a white can tap and make a life-linking vampire creature token, which we can then also untap again with our Wilderness Reclamation to keep making more vampire tokens. Then at two mana we've got some token makers with Emara Soul of the Accord, which makes a 1-1 life-linking soldier creature token whenever she becomes tapped, so that also counts with Convoke if we want to Convoke a March of the Multitudes. And then we've got Raise the Alarm to make two 1-1 soldiers at instant speed, so also combines nicely with Wilner's Reclamation. And we also have Sapperling Migration, this one's a sorcery, so not the best synergy with Reclamation, but just a good token maker making two Sapperlings for two mana and four Sapperlings for six mana. And then at 3 mana we do have Omen of the Sun, which does synergize quite well with Reclamation, making two 1-1 one, one white human soldier creature tokens and gains 2 life. And then for 2 and a white we can also sacrifice the Omen to scry 2, so that's another use for extra mana that we can generate through Wilderness Reclamation. And then March of the Multitudes is one of the most important cards in the deck. Great finisher once we get a ton of mana going with Reclamation and Mirari's Wake, but also just a good card to play if we have a bunch of tokens out using the Convoke mechanic. And then the life link on those soldiers is also very important to help us win any racing situation against other aggressive decks. And another card that's very useful in racing situations is Settled Wreckage, which most decks will not expect us to play out of a green-white token deck, but it does synergize quite well with our Reclamation, since we can untap our lands and still cast Settle. And it also gives us access to a sweeper that doesn't blow up our tokens, so we can still progress our own game plan while having good removal for aggressive decks. And then, of course, Wilderness Reclamation, one of the centerpieces of the deck, and our three copies of Mirari's Wake. And then a mana base alongside our Legion's Landing that can potentially make vampire tokens. We also have Castle Ardenvale, we're playing the full playset just because it's so good with our Reclamation if we've got a lot of mana to make a 1-1 human creature token. We've got 7 plains, 5 forests, 4 some petal grove and 4 temple garden. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. All right, we're on the draw with a reasonable hand. I'm missing green mana, but I can potentially flip landing thanks to the raise the alarm. And then we are pretty close to making more tokens with Aldanto, and that's quite good with Reclamation if we can find green. Facing Hallowed Fountain. So it looks like an Asper deck. Three mana. Sahili, that's not too bad. So we will get to flip Legion's Landing. And that also lets me play Reclamation. So I get to have a pretty efficient turn. And I guess we'll go after Sahili. Enough. 
And then end of turn I can make my first vampire token with Aldonso. Luckily Blast Zone already comes with one counter, so can destroy my tokens. Dovin. Is her opponent on an Esper Planeswalker token deck, maybe? Could also decide to raise the alarm if I think that lets me finish off a Planeswalker instead. But I can kill any one Planeswalker I choose here, so... Ooh, Mirarius Wake. Now we're really going off. So I get to kill both Planeswalkers, and I get to untap, essentially making 10 mana end of turn. Well, this was about as good as it uh, could have gone. I guess they can save one Planeswalker if they double chump, but that's fine by me. So it looks like her opponent's saving Sahili. And then uh, we can make some more tokens end of turn. Teferi means I need to cast Raise the Alarm now. That's fine. Bounces a vampire. No, I am not making this up as I go. And because we have all these lands that can make more tokens, we're uh, pretty well suited to beat a couple sweeper effects. More reclamations. So I need to probably go into full control here. So I can cast both my Reclamations. Yeah, that works too, I guess. Resolves, play another one. And we'll take out some Planeswalkers. I guess they could have another instant here, making a token with Sahili. I'll just play it safe and send three at each Planeswalker. Maybe three at the ferry is a bit much. All right, we'll send one phase then. We will meet again. And then put a stop end of turn. Float a whole bunch of mana. Make a token. Make a token. Make a token, make a token. And then we can make some more end of turn, maybe. Reclamation's a pretty messed up card. Karn Sion of Urza. They can have... I guess Karn the Great Creator could get that artifact that uh, shrinks down tokens out of the sideboard, but opponent explodes. Yeah, not sure if they were dead on board here, but if they weren't dead, they were very close to dead. Sweet, well this was about as good as it gets, with a turn 2 raise the alarm, turn 3 transform landing, into reclamation, into Mirari's Awake, into more reclamations with all the lands making tokens. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a fine hand. Can maybe flip landing thanks to the migration, and then I've got uh, Wilmer's Reclamation to untap my Aldonto. 
And then we're looking for like a March of the Multitudes or some other mana sink. Facing goblins. Alright, if they have Goblin Chain Whirler, we could be in trouble. I think I will offer the trades. I didn't think they'll accept. Otherwise I wouldn't make this attack. Sadly, Migration's a sorcery here. So I don't get to play around Goblin Chain Whirler. Which they could play thanks to the Prospector. Alright, if I get to flip landing, it's already step one. Alright, I have the incinerator to kill one of my tokens, sadly. So no flip landing this turn. Which means no reclamation. So that's gonna slow us down. But I guess I'll just make some more tokens. So the goblin deck sometimes functions more like a combo deck that tries to get multiple mana discounts, goblins in play, and then use goblin ringleader to find more goblins and kind of overwhelm the opponents. But uh, just ramping out ringleader here is not too bad. Yeah, I'll take it. Ooh, March is looking good. So we can flip landing. I'm tempted to save March for next turn. Once we can use the extra mana from Reclamation, so this turn I probably just attack with everyone. And then, um, yeah, I'll probably just make a token end of turn. And then next turn I can make a lot of soldier tokens. Usually always better to make vampire tokens with Adanto instead of Castle Ardenville since we get lifelink. Although sometimes there's exceptions if you want to diversify against, let's say, a Deputy of Detention or a Maelstrom Pulse. Goblin Matron probably gets Chain Whirler. Yep, so that's gonna blow up all our tokens. So we'll have to rebuild. I'll take two. So they could already cast Chain Whirler now if they wanted to sacrifice all their goblins. And they are going to. Maybe they're afraid of a Mirari's Wake getting our creatures out of range. But it does mean I get to still make a token end of turn at least. So they did swipe my board, but it did cost them a lot of resources too. So it's not too bad. And then I'm kind of forced to march main phase here. And hope they don't have another chain whirler. If they had another Chain Whirler, they probably would not have made that play because they could have potentially double Chain Whirlers in the same turn. So I think it's fine to do so here. So trigger, double tap Q to float all our mana. And then X equals 13 minus 3 is 10. Alright, 10 tokens, not too bad. Let's hope they survive. Could see Siege Gang Commander, instead it's going to be another Ringleader, which finds Firebrands. So that could chump block a token and kill another one. A little surprise they're attacking with the Chain Warlord here. We're gonna get to gain a lot of life from uh, all these lifelink tokens, so should be pretty safe to attack with all. Opponent takes eight.
and then end of turn I get to make a token, float some mana first, untap, and then make another token here. Alright, let's see what they can come up with. It is possible they have a single copy of Chain Warlord in their deck to search up with Goblin Matron, so it's possible they don't have another one. There's a lot of powerful 3 mana goblins, so there's not always room for all of them. Incinerator just hard casts. Cycle to deal 3 damage. The Black Splash might be for Call of the Death Dweller, which does combo well with Chain Whirler and Fanatical Firebrand, giving them death touch. But uh, yeah, Bodan packs it in, so not a bad performance, even through a Goblin Chain Whirler. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, with a reasonable opening hand. A landing into race or Migration to help me transform. And then we'll keep Riss protected for now in case our opponent wants to use removal. Fan Lurkers, our opponents on the Mono Blank Devotion deck most likely. Can probably get rid of a Temple Garden. I could trade, but I would like to transform Landing if possible. And then we'll go for Raise the Alarm, since we might end up kicking Migration later. Take three. And I get to play my Reclamation on 3. And our opponent hasn't missed a beat yet. A lot of devotion already, so if they have Obliterator into Grey Merchant, we are probably dead. And yep. So 1, 2, 3, 4. Maximum amount of devotion. And uh, I'll just make a token here. They can sack whatever we block to Ayara. Probably still want to decrease their devotion as much as possible. Alright, sell the wreckage could be huge. I would like to get Riss in play. So I could go Riss, Migration and then still settle, or I could go Reclamation a second time and just make some tokens with Adonto. I guess we want to get Riss in place so I can start doubling tokens. Now Grey Merchant's still a problem, but if they attack first, then uh, they'll lose a lot of devotion. And it's not too suspicious that I keep up 4 mana, since I could just make a lifelink token for 4 total. They can sacrifice to a Yara, or they can take the land. They will get a baby obliterator, which still counts for 4 devotion for Grey Merchant purposes. Ooh, March of the Multitudes. So we have some options. I can play second Reclamation. I'll get to untap my lands twice, which is enough to double with the Riss. Or I can just play Huge March. Hope they don't have Grey Merchants, and then... If I get to untap with the Riss and double my lifelink tokens, I'll be in great shape. I think that's what I'll do. And 
end of turn. Double tap Q to float all my mana. And then march 4x equals 8, 9, 10. All right, no gray merchants, please. There's land five, there's gray merchants, and that's 12 damage. All right, it's unfortunate. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw. Fine opening hands. Likely gonna have a flip legions landing, facing tempered steel. So this is a matchup we're drawing. Settle the wreckage is gonna be very important since without it, we're probably gonna fall behind and uh, die to an all that glitters or a giant army of a robots pumped by a steel overseer. But I've definitely won some games thanks to Settle the Rankage in the matchup. Opponent's still missing white mana. So they wouldn't be able to tempered steal me next turn at least. But that likely means they have Steel Overseer here if they kept that hand. Alright, just a stone coil. Maybe an ult that glitters. There's white mana. No attack. Not sure what's going on. I think I do want to transform landing here. Opponent takes it, afraid of a pump spell. And I'm just gonna landing and play Omen. And then we're hoping to draw Mirari's Wake, sell the wreckage. Reclamation would be nice too. They have double whites, still no tempered steel, so they must have kept a pretty loose hand. Alright, there's Reclamation. Let's get in there. Opponent can sack the puppets to make 1-1s one and trade, but that's fine by me. I should have uh, activated or used my Danto pre combat but I'm not gonna have a great use for that one extra mana anyway, so it's not too bad. Suppose I could have scryed with Omen of the Sun in addition to casting another one. And our opponent scoops it up. So yeah, they kept a hand without any payoffs. No Tempered Steel, no Steel Overseer. And if you keep a hand like that, the deck can be pretty underwhelming. So yeah, gotta learn to mulligan and find the right hands with a deck that has very few payoffs that actually matter. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw. Fine opening hands. Landing into Raise the Alarm. And there's Reclamation to combo with my Rizzo Redeemed. So that's potentially a very strong late game. Opponent looks to be on Gruul. Is it just a classic red-green beatdown deck or maybe dinosaurs? Right, it's just a classic Gruul aggro. Cards to watch out for, Questing Beasts, definitely problematic since we can block it easily. 
And then, of course, Amber Cleave can represent a ton of damage out of nowhere. So, opponent on the play with a turn 1 elf means we're probably going to be on the back foot. But if we can pull off a big turn with Reclamation into March of the Multitudes, we do have a chance of potentially stabilizing. I do really want to keep my tokens to flip landing next turn, so I don't think I trade. Gallia triggers. They do not use Gallia's ability, so they like all the cards in their hand. Alright, let's flip landing, shall we? Now, a Settler Wreckage would also not be a great answer since Gruel Spellbreaker prevents it from being cast since it gives the opponent hexproof. So that's not actually a great solution in, in this matchup when they have Spellbreaker out. And then I can Omen to gain a bit of life as well. And there's Questing Beast. Still not using Galia. So this is attacking for 11. I guess I can Omen of the Sun and then uh, double block Galia. Not a Racy Alarm. Yeah, I don't think uh, that's gonna quite do it. I have to basically attack with my Vampire just to gain one life. Otherwise, Questing Beast can kill me by itself. I guess that's what I need to do. But if they have an Amber Cleave, we're super dead. And this turn, try and get Riss in place so we can start doubling tokens. Opponent didn't even block, so that can be a good sign. So we'll pass, and then we can make a life linking token here. Unsap, and then make some more tokens with a raise or a danto. Thanks with everyone. Definitely smells like number cleave. Not gonna be able to survive that on a questing beast. But yeah, this is a matchup where if they don't have Spellbreaker, Zelda Wreckage can definitely swing a race in our favor. And we were close to doubling tokens with Riss, which would have been pretty nice. So anything I can do here... Prevent as much damage as possible, I guess. So this way I would be taking 5 and gaining 2. And there's a cleave. Alright, GG's. Alright, we're on the play with a fine opening hand. It's not the most exciting, but... Some tokens into Mirari's Wake could be decent in some games. Hoping to find Reclamation, Allegiance Landing. Alright, there's Landing. So that can speed up my Mirari's Wake by a turn.
So if I landing this turn plus migration, the next turn I could already cast Wake. Opponent on Sultai. Vraska. Can't kill my landing. Alright, fair enough. So really hoping for a land here. The land shall conquer you. All right, perfect. So I have seven tokens, so my opponents can survive this attack. So I could take out Nissa. Or I can just go face with everyone and essentially put them at two life. Yeah, I guess if they have like a sweeper, it could be bad. So I might want to send a couple of Nissa. They don't have any actual forests, so Nissa's not making a ton of extra mana. I think I just go face. If they had more forests, I would maybe go after Nyssa. Six mana. What is this? Casualties of War, Liliana. That's not gonna cut it. Second Wake, make everything 3-3. Three, three. Infinite mana to sink into my castle Ardenvale. Alright, sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a decent opening hand. Amara is not always the best at helping me flip landing by turn 3, but uh, she does her best. Turn 1 Knight of the Ebon Legion does block my 1-1 one -one pretty well. Not sure what I'm supposed to get rid of. I think just a land. And then a flip landing will make land 4 for reclamation. And then reclamation plus Rizzo redeemed is a nice combo. So it looks like I might have to suicide Riss if I want to flip landing this turn, which is probably not worth it, so we'll just uh, play Omen. Or I can make a token with Riss. So that's probably going to take away my Reclamation. Settle's not too useful. Well, 
Well, one more land and I can play Mirari's Wake, which definitely helps me take over the game with an active Rizzo redeemed. Prefer making the life linking token instead of the Elf Warrior token here. More discard. Takes away the Mirari's Wake, no doubt. The opponent knowing about Zelda Wreckage does make it a lot less effective. But yeah, if we just draw another land here, we could be in business. So I think I prefer Scrying with Omen as opposed to activating Riss here. Eh, never mind, they had it all. Could upkeep Scry with Omen, but I'll just take my draw step. So no good attacks. And I just gotta draw the payoffs again, the Reclamations, the Mirari's Wake, the Riss. March of the Multitudes would also be pretty good. Alright, at least they're empty-handed. So I think I will prioritize crying now that uh, we maybe have a window of opportunity to actually cast something powerful. Reclamation counts. Migrations, I guess, four tokens. It's not the worst. But I think we've got more impactful cards in the deck. Can just cast a landing to make a token. Start building up a giant army and hope to eventually find Riz the Redeemed March of the Multitudes or another Mirari's Wake. There we go. We'll just end of turn this. Not really afraid of any sweepers in particular. Double tap Q to float all our mana. Murder Strider kills one of them. Sure. So that's 7 tokens, so 4 plus 12 is 16. That's all the tokens. Enough to kill them in one attack, potentially. Is going to sacrifice Knight, hoping to maybe find a Grey Merchant. And 
I guess I can maybe gain some more life with Timurat 2 here. So they're probably at uh, 21 with 3 blockers. I think we still have enough. Alright, Xaxis even. Sweet. And ended at 42 life. The perfect number. So yeah, our green-white token deck is a ton of fun. Didn't get to combine Mirari's Wake with uh, Reclamation too often, but that's the dream in this deck, getting to make double mana with each land we untap with Reclamation. Can potentially use the same castle multiple times in each turn cycle to make more lifelinking tokens, so... Yeah, pretty fun take on a tokens deck, and Settler Rackage can definitely lead to some blowouts, although we didn't get to see any of them today. Definitely had a few of them in my practice games. So that's gonna do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also wanna thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.